Hello, uh, my name's Caleb Parkin and I'm, uh, I'm at home. I'm on my little writing desk where I tend to do my writing by hand. Um, so this, and I'm under the stairs, so that's what this funny uh, triangle in the corner here is. Uh, off screen, I'm joined by my dogs, uh, Barney and Zoot. So if there's any barking, I'll have to pause and uh, start again. So yeah, thanks for joining. Today we're going to be thinking about objects and we're going to do some writing for, I hope, about 45, 50 minutes around objects around the house. Um, so just to say a bit about me, my name's Caleb Parkin. I'm a poet and a tutor and a facilitator. So that first poet bit means that I write and publish poems. And so far, I've published poems. <laughs> I've published poems in various journals. So here's a load of them. And these, and this one, and then a load of these here. So these are all journals that I've been published in, and I'm working on uh, my own first collection. So that'll be a complete book of poems that hopefully will um, be done soon. I'm editing it at the moment at a different desk. I'm also a, a tutor for First Story, for Poetry Society, for various organisations, Poetry School, um, and that means, uh, picking things up off the sofa, uh, and that means that I've edited lots of books uh, of young people's and kids' writing. So here's some of my First Story ones that I've edited or been involved in, um, and these are some books from some other projects as well. So yeah, been involved in lots of books now. I'm also um, a writing for well-being practitioner. So I'm really interested in the ways that writing can keep us healthy and well uh, and connect to others and to work through tricky stuff uh, and to find our way through the world really. And last year I graduated with an MSc, a Master of Science in Creative Writing for Therapeutic Purposes. And during that, I wrote a research dissertation, which is a long piece of writing. You explore something in depth. Um, and I was thinking about museums and galleries. So part of that was I got really interested in objects and artworks um, and how we can work with those to write uh, and to explore aspects of well-being. In museums, this is called material culture. So all the stuff that we have around us, uh, my lamp and the plant in the background, the nest of tables, um, all of this stuff can have real significance. Uh, and it, it really does in a museum context. And I think we can find real meaning um, and creative material in seeing our stuff again afresh, having a proper look at it. Um, yeah, I think that's all I've got to say at this point. Anything else? Yeah, I guess um, part of it for me, my granny Joy um, was a toy collector and she was really interested in stuff. And so I grew up, I think, with quite a lot of her stuff around and that she used to collect things. So for me, there's a kind of real fascination in objects and which objects people are drawn to um, and developing our own taste. You know, what do we like? Why do we like it? A while ago, I ran uh, some workshops as part of Grace and Perry's exhibition at the Bristol Museum and Art Gallery. Um, which was a really interesting exploration of taste and material culture and things like that. So yeah, I think that's probably enough for me to say. So in real life, of course, you'd stop me and ask me any questions, but you can always pause me now if you need to. That's fine. Let's get started. I wanted to do a kind of warm up um, that's a thing called metaforaging. So metaforaging is a, a process of using stuff you've got around you, so books, magazines, packaging, anything like that, to generate interesting metaphors. Um, so here's what we'll need to do this first activity. I would like you to either get or think of the names of three things from around the house. And actually, I'm just gonna go and grab three things so that um, I can show you. Also, you might want your notebook. I should have said that. Um, I've got my notebook here, a notebook and a pen or a piece of paper and a pen. Anything that you want to write with is fine. You can write with a pencil. Uh, I've also got a cup of tea with me. 
you can pause me and make a cup of tea if you want as well. So, metaforaging. Find yourself three objects. I'm just going to do that now. Okay, so I might disappear off screen. Um, right, I've got the first one is a metal ruler I've got here. I'm going to grab a couple of other things. Um, I've got a shell from off our uh, windowsill, so I've got that one. Um, I've also got this giant rosette that we have that says champion, because it's a great thing. Um, so those are my three things. I've got a shell, I've got a champion rosette, and I've got a metal ruler, okay? All right, so that's the first thing, get your three things, or you can just decide on three things if you want. Right, there we go, put those down with my tea. Good. Um, the next thing I'd like you to do is to grab five random publications. Now, when I say random, I would like them to be quite different things. Okay, so um, I'm going to pick up from here this dog tricks book that I've got because I was trying to do some dog tricks um, with the dogs. But I'm not kept up with that particularly well. So grab five things. Okay, it can be a leaflet. It could be an instruction manual. It could be a magazine. Like whatever you've got around, grab five things. Um, uh, I'm going to get a Guardian Feast. Uh, there we go. Two. What else have I got? Oh, there we go. I've got the um, Lonely Planet Guide to Experimental Travel. Let's get a couple more things. Uh, might just go in the kitchen. I'm going to grab a couple of things from there. Oh, okay, we've got Anne Fine's uh, Loudmouth Louie uh, that I was bought because um, probably because I'm a bit like Louie, I suspect. But there we go. So that's four. I'll get something. I'm going to get something different from the kitchen. And I've got this new uh, book I've just got called Ecology and Popular Film. So they're all quite different. Okay, so we've got five things here. All right, you might need somewhere to put those. I'll put them on the floor. I'm going to put them on the sofa here. So Metaphoraging, it's a kind of found poem, and a found poem is when you um, take material, words and bits of text that are already in the world, and you spot them and think, hey, they're already a poem. Okay, so they're pretending not to be a poem, but they were really. So the important thing with this activity is to don't try and make sense. Quite a lot of the time, when we're doing writing activities, we're trying to make sense and make it too logical and all the rest of it. Don't bother with that. It's going to be wild and weird and that is good. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to write, for me, a rosette is, right, and write it five times. Rosette is, a rosette is, yeah. And then a shell is, and write that five times. So, right, and then what's the other one? A, uh, a metal ruler is, okay. So make sure you leave space over the other side of the page. Okay, so that should look like, look like that. So you've got, yeah, a shell is, a shell is, and you've got them five times, okay? So once you've done that, what I'd like to do is this, is for each of those things, you're going to find a sentence ending from one of your publications. All right. So this is a, a quick way of making some strange images out of um, those texts and using those objects. And hopefully it kind of helps us to see those objects differently, which is part of what we're doing today. 
Right, so let's take 10 minutes to do that now. So I'm gonna set a timer for 10 minutes. And what you do is you just look through, and maybe I'll give you an example or two. You look through and then find the sentence ending after to go after is, and then plonk it down in your found poem. Okay, so I'll just do the first one for you. This is from Ecology and Popular Film. A rosette is an undirected life. Okay. An undirected life. And then I'm going to do the same for a shell using this book. A shell is... A shell is... Cotton before the Civil War. <laughs> Cotton before the Civil War. And then a metal ruler is, I'm just flicking through, a metal ruler is industrialism in the United States. Okay. Find whatever books you've got around. This has got quite complicated language in it. Okay. Industrialism. Okay, so now I've got one each, one each on each of those. So do the same with each of your publications. So um, I'm going to pick up Loudmouth Louie now and I'm going to do the same thing and then I'll read what I've got and then if you need to, you can pause me and have another go. So I'm just going to set the timer now. Hopefully you're still foraging. I am.
there's still plenty of time so take another five minutes or so to keep looking through for those sentence endings Top tip: If you're if you're finding it tricky to find them, then look for um, the ends of sentence that start with a or an or the, because then it links on to the is really well. about three more minutes if you need them. If you don't, you can fast forward me a minute or two. Just one more minute. Twenty seconds. Okay, about five seconds. If you need to pause me to finish this off, completely fine. Good. Right then, so hopefully you've got a kind of 15 minute, um, 15 minute, you've got a, a 15 line, looking at the timer, I've got myself confused, uh, a 15 line poem, um, a found poem. Okay, I'm gonna read mine to you. So, a rosette is an undirected life. A rosette is one whole hour. A rosette is naked as a newborn baby. A rosette is Raz al Hanout and olive oil. A rosette is harmful objects or situations. A shell is cotton before the Civil War. A shell is important to be sure. That rhymed accidentally. A shell is in short supply. A shell is well combined. A shell is praising when she pees. That's from the dog training book. A metal ruler is industrialism in the US. A metal ruler is that funny sizzling noise. A metal ruler is real and imagined fears. A metal ruler is a certain youth of my acquaintance. A metal ruler is a regular solid door. Just to say thanks to the National Writing Project who, um, who I borrowed that activity from because I really love it. 
So one thing we can do with an activity like that is to work with one of the strange images that crops up through it. Some of them just seem to make no sense at all. Uh, and this is kind of what's called a surreal image. This is a good way of coming up with surreal images. Uh, look up the surrealists. They're very interesting. So images like a rosette is one whole hour made me think of this rosette a bit like a clock. So I quite enjoyed that. Maybe I had a rosette clock. Um, the rosette is naked as a newborn baby. Well, I don't know what a clothed rosette would be like. Um, a shell is in short supply. That was interesting to me because I thought, well, what if shells were in short supply? And then I think I enjoyed a metal ruler is a certain youth of my acquaintance. What if I did know a metal ruler? Um, and what was a metal ruler anyway? Could that be like a robot overlord? I guess so. I quite enjoy that. So the next part I'd like you to do is what's called a free write. Um, if you're not in the practice of free writing, it's good to build it up. So don't worry with this if you want to kind of spend four or five minutes doing it um, or if you want to spend a full 10 minutes. Um, I suggest giving it a go for 10 minutes. And what I'm going to ask you to do is to choose one of those images. Now, for me, I actually really like a metal ruler is a certain youth of my acquaintance because it does make me think that maybe there's like a robot overlord. So I kind of want to write about that. Um, and the ways that we can keep going with free writing. So what free writing is, right, let's start there. Free writing is just to keep the pen moving and just to write for a set period of time. If you've been in any first story workshops, you've probably given it a go. So you just set the timer for like 10 minutes or something, um, or sometimes even just one minute, uh, and just keep writing and say yes to everything that you're writing. If you've ever done drama, there's this great activity called yes and. If you keep saying no or no but when you're improvising, then you never get anywhere. But if you say yes and to an idea, so a metal ruler is a certain youth of my acquaintance, yes and we went to school together and at that point I didn't know he was made of metal or she was made of metal. Yeah, so you, you kind of keep saying yes to this idea. A poet called Philip Gross, who I really like, has this idea of um, what if, what then? And this is a great moment for that. So you say, what if a rosette is as naked as a newborn baby? What if a shell is in short supply? What would happen then? And then the invitation is to go as far as you can with that idea and to keep going with it. So I am gonna say yes to the idea, a metal ruler is a certain youth of my acquaintance. I'm actually gonna set the timer on my other device here, if it will let me, for eight minutes, okay? And what I want us to do is just to choose one of those images that was really peculiar, but that gave you an idea, say yes to it, keep writing, okay? And when you think you've finished writing, write a little bit more, because that's often where the interesting stuff is as well, okay? So I'm gonna start the timer for eight minutes. I'm going to write about the metal ruler, which is a certain youth of my acquaintance. One of the dogs is doing something, excuse us. Okay, and then whatever your idea is that came through the metaphoraging, I want you just to go for it and commit to that weird idea. Say yes to it. Ready? So we've got eight minutes. And go for it.
So just a few minutes, keep going. If you think you're finished, then keep writing with that strange idea, keep saying yes to it. So just about a, a minute, just every minute left. So just 20 seconds. So start rounding off whatever you're writing at the moment. Okay, how'd you get on? I hope it was all right um, trying out that what if, what then, and saying yes to whatever came up. I'll read you a bit of mine. Um, I went with a metal ruler idea. When I was at school, I had a friend made of metal. She was nice enough, would clink as we walked down the corridors, used to trick the vending machines by becoming magnetic for a moment, would nudge some extra cans of drink from it, so we had one each. In lessons, you could see her cogs whirring, literally during maths, though she seemed to get the answers right every time. Sometimes in home ec, she'd toast things when no one was looking using only her metallic palm, or by staring at one piece of bread until her eyes turned the red of a grill filament or halogen bulb. But we got on fine. Everyone kept out of her way and so tended to stay out of mine. After school, we drifted. She went off to a different college, maybe one for students gifted in that particular cybernetic way that she was. We'd occasionally Snapchat or WhatsApp. She was quick to reply like she was USB plugged in directly to the messaging app. Until one day, a few years ago, things changed. The traffic lights went iffy, the Wi-Fi got sticky and there were rumblings of something happening in the Houses of Parliament. That's when she patched in to all the devices, my phone and yours, everyone's phones, to let us know that she was back. This is your metal ruler, she said. 
and we all held our breath. So I wrote a little story. Where, wherever you've got to is brilliant. So the thing with that is just to keep saying yes to whatever's come up from the metaphoraging. All right, so I hope we've got another 20, 25 minutes left um, and let's do some more work around things. What I'd like to do now is to find a different object from around the house. I think it's good if it's something that you kind of see every day, but you have overlooked somewhat, okay? So that can be anything you like. Um, during sessions where I've done this activity, people have written about all kinds of things. And I'll give you some examples in a minute. So I'm just gonna go and grab something and then I'll talk you through this next bit. What can I get? Let's have a, have a look. Um, I've decided to work with the cheese grater. Here's the cheese grater. We've got two actually, but the other one's um, got cheese on it. So I didn't think that was very nice to bring that one. So I've got this one, this is the bigger one. It's lost a bit actually, but it's still fine. So cheese grater. Right, what I'd like us to do is odes to common things. All right, and I've got an approach we can use to do this. An ode is a poem that addresses a particular subject and it usually um, lavishes praise on that subject. The book I'm working on at the moment, the collection of poems, I've got an ode on a black plastic compost bin because I find the compost bin in our garden fascinating with all the activity that's going on in there. Pablo Neruda um, wrote a whole book, Odes to Common Things, right? And it's got all sorts in there, including the salt or pepper shaker that he's got on the front here. The one I particularly like is the, uh, the soap one um, where he addresses the soap directly. Uh, what is it that you bring to my nose so early every day, bar of soap, before I climb into my morning bath and go into the streets among men weighed down with goods? <clears throat> and he addresses lots of different things in here, including what else was there? There's a poem to a tomato, uh, to an onion, to um, a cat. And he's not the only one. Margaret Atwood has a brilliant poem where she writes to some desk objects. And John Donne, about 450, 500 years ago, wrote a poem to the sun, sun rising. Uh, and obviously the sun can't talk back. So poets write it all the time, talking to objects. And what I'd like is to address our objects. Actually, I wanna give you a couple of examples of students writing as well. This is from the St. Bede's Catholic College anthology. And there's two students here wrote beautiful poems to objects. Uh, this is Jesse Anyanwu, I think I pronounced that right. Uh, and he was writing to a key ring. I think these will be up on the website as well, so hopefully you'll be able to see them. It's called Hey Grandma. Long time no see. I hope you're feeling better now. I know I promised to be a good boy since your last visit and to take care of my brothers and mum, but I know I haven't been living up to you, and I'm sorry about that. I can still remember that time when you came and visited us and we went to town together 10 years ago. Oh, it was so cold and I still remember your comfy purple jacket when we went to Asda but couldn't stop, couldn't shop because Tobe cried so bad we had to go home. Good times. It hasn't been easy since you left. Trust me, it hasn't. But I know wherever I go, you're with me on my keychain. So if I'm feeling bad or struggling, I know you're still with me watching from above. I miss you so much. I really do. So Jesse's piece started from a key ring, but became a poem about loss and about family and relationships. Um, and I remember that being really moving when I first heard it. So this one is, um, this is by Ashley Tepa Tepa from the same school. She wrote a really different poem, which was really joyous, called Mascara. Mascara. Scandal eyes rimmel London, you make my lashes come alive. Just one stroke and my whole face comes to life. Extreme volume, no clumps, your bristly tapered wand casts mysterious magical spells on my lashes. Various celebs are used by you, which is why I chose to invest in you too. 12 millilitres can last you a lifetime, loaded with such black liquid that can do so much. Ashley, I know you're used by me, but when in a rush, don't leave me open here in the bathroom sink, surrounded by puddles of water. As the hours go by, I'm here drying up, 
and trying to live my life to the fullest. So she had a lot of fun writing about the um, mascara there and then the mascara responds. So let's have a go with our own objects. I'm going to set a timer here for five minutes and I'm going to tell you what to do. So the first thing I want you to do is get your object and I'd like you to describe it as if you were an alien scientist, right, in great detail for five minutes. And I want you to not be creative at all. I just want you to say what it is, what shape it is, what material, you know, roughly how many um, of these cheese grating holes are on it. You know, it's like oval and it's like a tube. Yeah. So be be really matter of fact, get to know its material properties, the thing. All right. So I'm starting the timer and I just want you to keep going with that for now. So get to know your object. You can pause me at any time if you need to. Um, so let's just go for it. So five minutes of factual writing like you're a scientist. can actually measure it with my metal rule. It's 15 centimetres, that's what I thought it was. And don't try and be poetic with this. Just literally just give me the facts. Just the facts, ma'am, as they say. OK, so just say the facts about the object. Let's just take another one more minute to say all the factual stuff about your object. Okay, so just start to round off your factual description of your household object, please. Oh, 
All right, so just finish that off there. Right then. So how did you get on? What was it like trying sort of not being creative where you just try and describe the thing really sort of um, accurately and scientifically? Um, I wrote these kinds of things. Uh, it is around 15 centimeters tall, made of stainless steel, oval in shape, a kind of odd pipe, which it kind of is. Um, one side has larger holes, around 40 at a guess. The other side has a larger number of smaller grating holes. The blades are not so sharp, but could cut with some force. It's shiny, stainless steel, reflects the world around it, like my notebook right now, which it does. It's quite reflective. Um, it is in two pieces of metal joined uh, by in seams on either side. So that's all about my grater. All right, good. Now what I'd like you to do is this. I would like you to address that object directly, okay? Um, you're gonna ask it questions. Um, you can lavish praise on it for the service it gives. Oh, cheese grater, thank you for grating cheese on my spaghetti bolognese or whatever I might eat in an omelette. Who knows? Um, praise its qualities, praise its service, its unexpected beauty. Stainless steel, for example, is wonderful. And just go for it and keep, keep referring to it as you, all right? Address the cheese grater, address whatever your object is and have fun with that. And go over the top. I think sometimes it's a good practice in writing to go too far because you can bring it back later, but go over the top in your lavishing of praise upon your object. Let's take 10 minutes to do that and I'm going to really go for it in praising the, um, the cheese grater. So 10 minutes beginning now. If you want, by the way, you can use the phrase uh, "old oh, cheese grater or oh, whatever it is, and just keep saying that, come back to it and ask it loads of questions. It can all be questions if you want. OK, off you go. So that was the dog.
So you can probably hear next door's dog as well now. So about three minutes to lavish praise on your object. So just another minute or so, just to see where you get to. Okay, so about 20 seconds. So if you just start rounding off your address to the thing. Okay. What I'm going to say is um, if you want to, you could also, um, there's your ode that you've written to the thing. If you want to, you could pause and you could do another bit of writing for 10 minutes where you write as that thing. Okay, so you write as an as I. So if I was the cheese grater, what would I want to say? What would I want to say back to myself? Uh, I'll leave that with you. Otherwise, this will go on too long. Um, I'll just read you a little bit of my um, cheese grater piece from the beginning. Oh, cheese grater, you are an oval pipe of potential. Imagine the time we save not chopping cheese into tiny pieces for you, O oh, grater, are the greatest. Sorry. Your grit in the yellow coal face of a block of cheddar. You are the shredder of parmesan on pasta, the creator of coleslaw-friendly carrot. Let's not mention it. Forget that blender. Oh, grater, you look like a futuristic metal skirt or a skyscraper in a space colony. It goes on in that vein. I had great fun with that. Um, so where did you get to with your object? I'd love to read some of these pieces where you've had fun lavishing praise, writing an ode to some household objects. And maybe if you um, if you also wrote back to yourself as the object, because that can be great fun, like Ashley did with the mascara that had quite a lot to say back. 
Good. All right, well, I hope you've enjoyed today and I hope it's given you some inspiration on ways that you can work with objects, any objects. You can use that approach of it and then writing to you, to an object. And then if you want, writing as I, writing back from the object or a painting or a cloud or a leaf or anything you want. OK, so use that approach. I find it really helpful. A few things to round off with. Um, just thank you for writing along and I hope you found it enjoyable. National Writing Day is the 24th of June. Um, there'll be a national writing activity for young people across the country uh, who'll be taking part. So do get involved with that. There's more exercises at nationalwritingday.org.uk. Uh, and if you're on Twitter, you can share your work uh, tagging at First Story or on Instagram at FS Books. And you can use the hashtag, hashtag write from home, all one word. OK, it's been lovely uh, writing with you. Well, we're just with me today and my dogs. So, yeah, and I hope you have enjoyed this um, and look forward to reading your writing. Thanks very much. Bye.